It started out as one woman's quest to find her biological mother. She knew she'd been abandoned at birth, rescued by a good Samaritan who said she found her in an alley. But what this woman was about to find out would not only change her life, but the lives of two other complete strangers forever. We begin tonight with ABC's Elizabeth Vargas. I think if it was Saturday morning, 26-year-old mother of two, Joanne Hauser, runs out to grab milk for that morning's breakfast. And I thought I heard something like a cat. A closer look revealed a paper bag next to a dumpster. I looked into this bag, and there was a baby in the bag. A baby, astonishingly naked, with the umbilical cord still attached. I picked up the bag, and I rode back lickety-split to my house, and I dialed 911. The local television station, KABC, captures this video of baby Jane Doe, a newborn just hours old, in an incubator at the hospital. The local newspaper hails the woman on the bicycle as an angel of mercy. She looked like a little doll, just perfect. A perfect baby girl abandoned on a street in this working class community of Lawndale, California, a street that held a gritty distinction. What's its reputation? Prostitution. C.C. Moore is a genetic genealogist whose specialty is foundlings, the name for abandoned babies. Initially, I thought perhaps the mother was a prostitute that was working on Hawthorne Boulevard. So was it one of those working girls or a teenager from the local high school just down the street? No one ever claims Lawndale's baby doe. Fast forward 34 years, that baby is now all grown up. You take this one, Anna. Janet Barnacote lives north of Los Angeles, about 100 miles from where she was found. This is my dad. After a year in foster care, she was adopted by a loving family, but vexing questions remained. Do I have siblings? Who are my parents? Why was I adopted? Why didn't they want me? I got really mad and angry, and I held on to that for quite a long time, and she tossed me away. It was tearing me up inside, and I didn't, couldn't handle that anymore. Desperate for any clues, Janet turned to that good Samaritan who found her in the paper bag, Joanne Hauser. She was my last connection to my birth mother. And that led to this emotional, heartfelt reunion with her guardian angel. She told me that I wasn't crying, more of like a whimper. I imagine you also must have thanked her that day. Oh, I did, yes. She could have just kept going, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't be sitting here today. The two stayed in touch, but the reunion offered no clues. The only other way that they can learn about their heritage and their birth families is DNA. So Janet sends a saliva sample to Ancestry.com and almost immediately hits pay dirt, a notification she has a match. I was like, what? Wait a minute. Baby Jane Doe has a brother. His name is Dean Hondorf. The sibling's emotional reunion was captured on local news. Oh my God, what was that like to put your arms around your sister for the first time in your life? It was like we had known each other forever, and there was never, like, we never skipped a beat. It was a brother hug. Thank you! Oh, my God! The brother and sister soon realized they shared more than blood. Like Janet, Dean was a foundling, abandoned just hours old in a paper bag, a mile from the alley where Janet was found five years earlier. And then another surprise, another hit on the DNA database. Wow. Holy cow, <laughs> are you serious? Genealogist Cece Moore found the sister neither of them knew they had, whose life echoed that familiar refrain, a baby just hours old, wrapped in a towel, abandoned. That baby, Julie Hutchison, is now 31 years old and working as an artist in Baltimore. Nightline brings Julie 2,600 miles from Baltimore to Los Angeles to meet her biological brother and sister. Oh, there she is. Okay. We're nervous. Oh, give me a hug. <laughs> oh, my God. Nice. <laughs> oh, we have the same laugh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But Cece wasn't done. There was yet another match. We got very lucky. We found a first cousin. A first cousin on their mother's side. 
His name is Adrian. And here is where it gets interesting. Because Cece looks Adrian up on Facebook, and there she is stunned. As she scrolls down Adrian's list of friends, a name this patchwork family already knows well. Joanne Hauser. Remember her? There was a baby in the bag. That good Samaritan who found Janet while riding her bike. Cece takes the extraordinary news to all three siblings. So the woman that found you is either your mother or your aunt. I've met her. I sat in her house. This breaks my heart. I'm so sorry. That we all had to go through, you know. After more than three decades, finally, Joanne Hauser's moment of reckoning has arrived. The so-called Good Samaritan is being paid a visit by three siblings. Oh. Janet is finally sitting yeah, at the table know. with the woman who may have the answers to a lifetime of questions. Well, okay, I'll ha I have something to say. I, today I decided I better come clean and it's probably mind boggling, but yeah, I did mm -hmm. give birth to you. I know it. Yeah. I just want you to know I'm not I'm mad so at you. sorry, I'm so sorry. A 34 year old mystery is solved. Joanne wasn't her guardian angel. Joanne is her birth I mother. I forgive you. I'm so I really sorry. do. I forgive you. We, we, want, we want you to know we're not mad at you. We love you. And when she finally came clean, I could feel like her burden. I could feel it and I could see it. And I, I just couldn't be mad at her. I hated you. Not you, but I hated you. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I can't. I can't anymore. Moments later, Dean and Julie appear at the door. And this is Dean. Dean, oh my God. As soon as I walked in there, my heart broke for her. Why? This is a woman who's been through so much. You know, I can't hate her. I just want you to know that I do love you. Yeah. Dean. Yep. We all do. He's, he's the quiet one. <laughs> For Dean, forgiveness comes hard. She just looked like a stranger to me. You know, I, she didn't look. There was no flicker of recognition. No. Not no. like you had with your own sister. No. There are people who hear this and can sort of wrap their heads around. Well, yeah, and that's why I doing it once. Yeah. But three, three times, times, right? I didn't want to do this because I would be here with you and I would be on TV and everybody's gonna know. It's not easy to face. And it's not an easy story to tell. At 22 years old, Joanne marries and has two boys, but the marriage quickly crumbles. She divorces and then broke, single and unemployed, finds herself pregnant. So what happened when you went into labor? Were you afraid? I was terrified. I remember it was around four o'clock in the morning and I did it by myself. You know, I laid there and went through the labor and then went into the bathroom in the tub and drew the warm water and laid in the warm water, and that helped. Feeling ill-equipped to care for any more children, out of desperation, Joanne hatches that outlandish scheme, playing Good Samaritan, who found a baby in the alley. Four years later, still single, she finds herself pregnant yet again. And shockingly, it would happen a third time. How much did you think about these three children? All the time, every day. And then one day in 2013, you find out Janet is yeah. looking for you. Yeah. Were you excited? Yeah, I was. You thought, I'm going to see my daughter. I was thrilled. But it was just like, oh my god, there she is. And she's a grown woman. Have you forgiven yourself yet? I don't think I have. I don't think so. I don't know how I can. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I really don't. At least now, the really hard healing can begin. A group hug, yeah. please. Right. I've learned that foundlings are the most forgiving, loving people when they grow up that I've ever met. They want that connection. And so in order to have that and foster it, you have to let go all of that negativity. A family working to rebuild itself, forging new memories together stitching the once torn fabric into a portrait of an American family. Cheers. Cheers. To Cheers. Cheers to family. Cheers. Salud. For Nightline, I'm Elizabeth Vargas in New York.